Hi everyone. I'm here in the western region in Ghana at Benzo Palm Oil Plantations. I'm here with Avala, who's the MD for the operation here, and Benjamin, who is the finance manager, I think is, is your title, correct? Um, so I know a lot of you have been excited that we're going to be bringing palm oil on board with, uh, with Baraka, and we've been taking our time because we wanted to find the right partner. We wanted to find partners that believe in what we believe in, in terms of the way business creates profit, but also contributes to community and environment at the same time. And Benzo fits that. Benzo sources some of the palm kernels that they, they make our palm kernel oil out of from a smallholder plantation that I actually helped to develop maybe about 15 years ago, working and consulting in the mining industry. So, Avala, I, you were telling me, I, I mean, it's amazing some of what, what you're doing, but tell me again about the school program and how through Benzo's work, you now, you have a doctor that just graduated, you, you know, you're, you're taking children, you create even nursery, nursing mothers can leave their children and you really create that nurturing environment that supports your employees and the community and you bring community children into it. So please just tell me a bit more about that. Very well, thank you very much. Um, Ben's Oil Palm Plantation is actually a plantation that um, was started um, a little over 40 years ago. Wow. And it started as a subsidiary of Unilever in a joint ventureship with the government of Ghana. But that is now history. Um, it is now owned by predominantly Wilma and then with about 18% or 20 belonging to the local community and pub the pub investing public in Ghana, including our social, our national social security and insurance trust, you know. Mm. But um, um, from the very beginning, the, 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 we, we believed our core values included and mainly underpinned by um, what we call sustainable agriculture at that time. And now we have in the oil palm industry what is known as a round table on sustainable palm oil. And we are happy to say that um, Ben's Oil Palm Plantation um, is the first to be RSPO certified in Ghana and the second in Africa for that matter. But uh, our mission is actually to do our work and to be a center of excellence and in particular to do our production in a socially responsible and ecologically sustainable manner and also ensuring that um, we are economically viable. Um, as we speak, our production base, the raw materials, that's the palm fruits, we source about half of it from a combination of small scheme smallholder and our growers across the western and central regions of Ghana. And about how many? About how many? I mean, that would impact thousands of families, then, isn't thousands it? Thousands of families. Thousands and thousands of families. Yes, certainly. And thousands. and you, and and you provide, you provide support to them as as well on on their seedlings, on technical we support. Give them and, seedlings, best management practice, and in some cases, even we give them inputs like fertilizer, including. The, 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 the smallholder scheme that you develop, they, we, they, 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 they put their, their volumes together with ours and we can get cheap, lower prices for fertilizer. Yes, yes. And then they pick from us because all their crop actually comes to us for production. And uh, your phone keeps ringing. That's life. You're a busy man. So, so. Um, as part of our sustainability principles and practices, um, you can see right behind you, we have a... We have right behind you uh, a clinic, a clinic that, a clinic that uh, takes about 20,000 outpatients annually. And out of that number, a little over half actually come from the communities around us. And they find our facility um, the preferred place to get their healthcare needs because we have a resident medical doctor, we have midwives, so 
um, family planning, education, and even HIV education. We have all kind of schemes. We, we've been working with the, the, the Mal uh, Malaria Safe Program, which, which is a, a John Hopkins University mm -hmm. uh, program with uh, an NGO in Ghana. And we have systematically been reducing the incidence of malaria amongst our, our workers mm -hmm. and the communities around us. You know, and, and, and we have a school, a basic school from up to nursery so that nursing mothers can leave their children in a safe place and go to work and, and, and up to the junior high school before they go to the, the senior high school and then to the university. Mm -hmm. And we have nearly 1,000 children in our school wow. and every fourth child comes from the community around us. So and, so it's not it's not just children, for it's no, not no, just no, no, for no, your no. workers, it's for, for we, the community. We, we, but, we recognize the community as a as a if you like part and parcel of our business and we don't want to leave them behind. We we are partners together. Mm -hmm. You know. And and as I told you earlier, some of the children from our school here, even this year alone, two of them have entered the medical school. And as for the teacher education, colleges, colleges of education, and those who have gone to study engineering or science and others, we have so many of them coming from our employees. Yeah. We run a scholarship scheme so that, and, and, and it covers the communities around us and our own employees and every year, in fact this year we gave up to 21 scholarships and every year we keep giving and, and that helps some of the otherwise less endowed and who may never have gone to tertiary education um, getting the benefits of this. Well, and, and even, I'm, I mean, going back to the medical, if it wasn't for your investment in a medical facility, what would there be in the area? There wouldn't be much for medical services I, I here, would there? I can imagine what it would have been, because even as we speak, the, the district capital itself, mm -hmm. You find people coming from the district capital, coming backwards to attend, to look for medical yeah. service here. And the, the reason is simple. We have a resident medical doctor. We have a laboratory so they can do uh, laboratory investigations. And our, our pharmacy is equipped with the medicines. We hardly turn people away. And we are, the, the facility is national health insurance accredited. So anybody that comes from the communities or wherever with a valid national health insurance um, card we treat them and even um, sometimes we have up to about half a million cities in areas uh, that we have yeah. to claim from the scheme getting paid getting paid from the government uh, yes, is yes, slow yes. But, but we see that as our yeah. contribution uh, to the community and giving back to the community in an indirect way. Well, well, and I see in different things. When we were driving in here, I mean, one of the things that, that struck me is I know that traditionally employment and, and work in the in the oil palm sector is by men, but as uh, well, it's making noise, so let's just watch a truck go by with uh, with some of the fruits on. Connected so, from several communities. So that and so those they get, are they get small regular holding. income from this. Yeah, and you go pick it up. They don't have to go and sell it on no, the roadside. No, and, no. But and, but the one thing that that I was getting to, which was just on the way in, I, I noticed traditionally work in the oil palm sector is done by men. But as I was looking at your thinning crews and your crews out there, I see women working there. So that that is not entirely correct. There is a fair amount of the work here that women are best placed to do. One of them has to do with um, the picking of the loose fruits. Uh -huh. Women are more diligent. Oh, I know. And, and, and that work is less strenuous. Mm -hmm. It is less strenuous. So for the collection of loose fruits yeah. is largely and almost entirely done by women. But but I know I noticed women out out working with men in, in doing some some cleanup. I don't know if they were yes, picking um, seedlings for, for, or for maintenance work. Yeah, like yeah. circle weeding is also a lighter part of the work that okay. is done in plantations. And women tend to do the manual circle yeah. weeding, and 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 also of course when you go to the nursery where we raise the seedlings, 
then that one you have about 90 percent of mm. them being women because they, they sure. have the tender care for the seedlings and they, 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 they are the best people to do it so so you're impacting thousands of families i, I mean the one thing that is surprising to me is, is I, as you know, I do a lot of work also in the SDGs and the Sustainable Development Goals. And just as I've gotten to know you, as I've done the research on Benzo and we've been talking, you are having such an impact on, on the SDGs. And uh, I, I really hope that next time I come, I even see an SDG logo here. So you, well, I... so you help to, because you're you're really you're doing the you're doing the work you're having such an impact on it and having that would help to encourage others even i i couldn't agree more with you and specifically when it comes to health we stand very tall oh. with what our clinic is doing when it comes to education we stand tall in fact our school is one of the best schools in the district and even in the region and indeed last year a people from our school won the head of state's award so wow. they went all the way to accra to the flagstaff house mm -hmm. the seat of government to receive an award uh, around march when we did our independence day celebration there was a regional competition uh, a quiz science and mathematics competition and again out of 12 districts in the region our school represented our district and came second we were only beaten by the school that sits in the university, the University of Mines and Technology. Ah, Our school came second, meaning we were second to just one uh, school out of the 12 districts. So you can see how we are contributing to education. To Now, if you look that way, you will see our turbine uh, boiler house. Mm -hmm. We are generating nearly two and a half million kilowatt hours of renewable energy. Wow. Just using biomass from the process which otherwise would be called waste but mm -hmm. now it is wealth we yeah. use that to generate power i i and like indeed, that wait waste to waste to wealth yes so. indeed 90 percent 95 92 percent of the power that we use in the mill in the plant in the office is all generated by from renewable energy sources and 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 that if uh, it certainly feeds yeah. into the sds uh, uh, it, uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and, it, it does and it, all of the rest of it. It feeds into smart business and Very. it feeds into the future. Very. Well, I, I just, I, I really want to thank you. I know you're busy. Your phone has been ringing and people trying to get you, but I really appreciate your time this morning. You know, ben, Benjamin, uh, you know, I thank you. I am really looking forward to this partnership, this collaboration with, with Baraka and the, and the CSR Training Institute. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just thrilled that we're soon going to be able to offer palm oil to consumers in North palm America, kernel, palm, palm, kernel palm, palm kernel oil, oil. Yeah. palm kernel oil to consumers in North America and, and around the world that comes from here and is made by a company that sources from smallholder growers and really pays attention to community and environment and social impact. So thank you. You are perfect.